I'm Dr. Michael Detola. This is Megan Strong. Put down the hand piece. It's time for Chairside Live. Welcome to Chairside Live, and we've got a great case of the week to share with you this week. In fact, I always like to make a point of catching doctors doing something right. And in today's case of the week, uh, this particular dentist uh, prepared a fantastic tooth, took a great impression of it for a Brooks or Crown. And we're going to share that with you because it's a great example of what things should look like when you do just about everything right. But before we get to the case of the week, let's get an update on the news from Megan. Megan, how are you today? Great, how are you? Good, thanks. All right, let's take a look at what's going on. Well, we all know that our smile can greatly impact our self-esteem and the way we interact with others, but now there's some science behind it. So I'm sure, Dr. D, you see this all the time, patients coming in wanting to fix their smile to feel better about themselves. Absolutely. It can be anything from a simple bleaching to a full set of veneers. Well, now there's a study to back that up. The study was conducted by Kelton Research for Align Technology, the makers of Invisalign, and it found that people with straight teeth are perceived as more successful, smarter, and having more dates. About 1,500 Americans were shown images of men and women with crooked and straight teeth. And the results show that Americans perceive people with straight teeth, probably those who have undergone orthodontic treatment, to have more desirable qualities than those with crooked teeth. The people with straight teeth were said to be happy, surrounded by loved ones, and professionally successful. I can tell that that's definitely an American study that was done. You know, I remember in my favorite episode of The Simpsons, uh, Lisa Simpson is uh, really afraid to get orthodontics. She's afraid to undergo the treatment. And in order to convince her that it's really necessary, the orthodontist pulls out the big book of British smiles. And, and it's horrendous and it's scary and it scares her into getting her teeth straightened. So it was very effective in that case. All right, now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the case of the week. On this week's case of the week, I want to show you actually a really nice case. And as always, I folded the name over so you can't see who the doctor is. Although this is, case is so nice, I should probably actually give him some publicity. But I won't mention his name because I don't want to embarrass Dr. Robbins. But it's an awesome case. Uh, a couple of things that I like about it, um, it's a Bruxer case, which is nice. Obviously, I'm a big fan of monolithic restorations. And the Vita Master 3D shade, loving it, uh, Dr. Robbins. That's absolutely fantastic that you're using that 3D shades. I'm a big fan of the 3D shades and find that those shade tabs match the natural teeth much better than the Vita Classic shade guides. Let's take a look at the impression. First thing we notice, we've got a plastic uh, impression tray. I'm kind of a fan of metal impression trays, but if you use a stiff enough material, um, you'll be okay. And as I try to compress this in the area where the prep is. It's pretty stiff. I can probably compress it a little bit, but I don't know that that happened while the patient was biting on it. Usually for there to be compression, you'll see the teeth coming in contact with the tray somewhere, or you'll see the tray coming in contact with the retromolar area, but it looks like it was a clean impression. In fact, if we hold it up to the light, we can see that all the unprepared teeth were just about in contact, save for the mesh that's in the tray. So we know the patient was all the way together and it doesn't look like there was any impingement on the tray itself by the teeth or the soft tissue. So we're gonna assume that uh, patient came together. And you know, so in the end, really probably nothing wrong with that plastic tray. I just like the stiffer metal trays, probably personal preference. Let's take a look at the actual impression of the prep itself and it's gorgeous. I mean, it just does not get any better than that. We can clearly see the margin defined 360 degrees uh, around the tooth itself. We can see a tag of material, at least a half millimeter of material uh, beyond the margin as well. And so there's going to be no doubt in the technician's mind where this margin ends and how to fashion the emergence profile of this restoration because this little tag of material here is in fact an impression of the root structure of the tooth. So uh, fantastic job with the impression. Let's take a look at the model and you would expect it to look uh, pretty darn nice and it does in fact look pretty darn nice. In fact, I grabbed this when I saw it before it's even been dye trimmed, but it, it already looks like it's been dye trimmed because it's such a clean impression. So really it's just a matter of going in and taking away some of this stone that you see uh, around here to expose um, uh, the margin. So you can see how easy that's gonna be to dye trim. In fact, if you had a, a dental technician on here on their very first day, this would be the case you would want to start with because uh, the better the impression we take, the more basic it is for them to be able to trim the dye and the easier it is. You don't need advanced dye tr trimming skills until dentists start to send you less than ideal impressions. It's just a great looking prep too. We got five millimeters 
of height on the preparation. So this Bruxer crown can be uh, cemented with a, a traditional uh, crown and bridge cement. My choice would be the Ceramer cement from Doxa because the dental advisor has shown that it uh, actually chemically bonds to the Bruxer material. If we look at the bite, uh, when we have the patient bite together or have the model bite together, we can see we've got at least two millimeters of occlusal reduction there, and that's actually more uh, than we need for Bruxer, but that's going to give us a Bruxer crown that's going to last for decades uh, instead of years uh, because of that reduction. So we've got a nice clean margin too. In fact, this is really kind of a universal prep. This will work for a PFM. This would work for a lava crown. This will work for an Emax crown, and this will certainly work for a Bruxer crown as well. In fact, since this is a Bruxer crown, if you wanted to be more conservative, uh, Dr. Robbins could have prepped a feather edge margin uh, and, or could have just prepped a knife edge or could have prepped a bevel. Uh, but this universal prep is fantastic. This is exactly what I uh, like to show Dennis as the ideal preparation. I use the reverse prep technique to get to this point. I don't know exactly how Dr. Robbins got to this point, but it doesn't matter because it's absolutely uh, fantastic and a great example of the type of dentistry we should all be doing. That's it for this week's edition of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan Strong, and everybody here at Glidewell Laboratories, thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next week.